Good morning. Welcome to Washita Mountain Living Podcast Special Edition. Now, it's not nothing special about today's edition, but it, you know, if you tell people that, well, they might think they're getting more than they usually do. No, just me talking like I normally do, and that's it. Ain't nothing special about it. All right, let's move on. I don't remember what I was going to say. But it don't matter. Let's get a sip of coffee. That always jiggles the brain a little bit. Uh-huh. It's good. It's real good. All right. Today's going to be a big day. I'm going to begin my cabinet build. I just got a peek at the weather. <laughs> 30 to 35 mile an hour winds. Yeah, that's really good when you're out there sawing on a saw and sawdust. So I got to look and see which direction the wind, you know, the wind's blowing and make sure my sawdust goes away from me because the last thing you want is a face full of cedar sawdust or any kind of sawdust. So I've got 25 two by fours out in the shed that are from the sawmill. So they are actually two by four, way bigger than what I need for, uh, to build cabinets with. So I will probably be cutting them down a little bit. Um, I kind of was saving those for the workbench in the new building, but I can go get more. Uh, I'm not going to require... In fact, I think I do have four or five regular 2x4s, so I may I may get away with just that, what I have in there. We'll see. So that was my uh, that is my plan for tomorrow. Obviously, I can't go to the hardware store unless I ran to Fort Smith or somewhere to Lowe's and buy the regular ones but i already got those so there's no reason to buy them uh, we'll get something built today so i can put my butcher block in place uh, i got a few ideas running around in my head of how to do what i'm gonna do uh, man i just hate to cut into that stuff it's nice but it needs to be cut the nice thing about it is it's it's solid wood, so matter where you know, no matter where you cut, you got a finished edge, a butcher block. Just take some sandpaper and smooth it out a little bit, and you're good to go. But that stuff is not what you want to mess up on. It is not cheap. It is not cheap by a long shot. So, yeah, been a couple of weird days. Uh, when I went to purchase the butcher block, I'm going to tell you the story on what happened there. I've kind of been jumping to conclusions on things. <laughs> I got a little hot-headed. So, I put money aside for this remodel. Okay, I put a certain amount of money aside. I have that in an account. But what I do is I take a credit card that gives me points. And I purchase each thing I need with the credit card. Then I take, you know, the money and I pay off the balance. That way I get the points. Uh, you, you know, they add up pretty quick with large purchases, especially like the flooring and that. So I get the butcher block. Uh, what I do is I take the old countertop pieces back. Uh, they weren't that expensive. They were like $80 a piece. So I had like $155 that went back on the card. Okay. And that went through without a hitch. So then I returned them, went back into the store picked out the butcher block I needed, which was a whole lot more than that. And I get to the counter and I go to, she brings me up, I get my military discount and I go to pay. So I pull out the credit card, which I thought, and they declined it. Man, I was hot. I'm like, because what had happened a couple days before when I got, I went and I bought the flooring and then I bought those countertops. Well, then I started getting all these. The, my phone started blowing up. Hey, is this you buying this? And, you know, the fraud alerts. Because you spent uh, what they think's a fortune. And one of the, the text messages says, was this you? And you type no for N for no or Y for yes. I typed Y. And I, was, I figured that'd be the end of it. So I get up there to pay for the butcher block, and I pull out my card, put it in, declined, and I'm mad in a hornet. I got to whip out another source and that I wasn't prepared for. Uh, I'd take it out of my checking account, and I did not want to do that. 
So I paid for it, went home, got right on the phone, called the uh, USAA up, and I'm just, you know, I, I told them the story, and it was not the brightest person on earth. You know, he was like, okay, I don't know. One of them, I don't know how he got through the cracks of USAA, because they're usually pretty sharp. Come to find out. I had used a debit card from the USAA checking account that I have, which I don't keep much money in. I just keep, you know, under $100 in there usually. But it looks exactly like the, the credit card. Exactly. It just says a few different words on top. Well, I didn't have these with me that day, and I knew when I put it in something was wrong. I told the little girl, I said, man, I might have used the wrong card. I just... You know, I whipped out my checking account debit card and went ahead and paid for it. So then, on the way home, you know, everything's cool. I'm on the way home. I figure, well, I'm going to stop at the Harps in Mansfield, the grocery store, pick up a few things. And I never stop there. Never. I always stop at my local one. You know, I, I don't particularly care for that store, but I, I usually go to my local one. Uh... And Harps is about a half an hour away from home, so you don't want to get caught in traffic. And I bought ice cream. Now, I don't buy ice cream very often, but I've had a sweet tooth. And I'll get it out, and I'll eat a little bit of it, put it back in the freezer. It goes on for a week. You know, it's like one of them things you forget that's in the freezer, and you're sitting there, and you're bored, and you're like, your eyes get real big. You pause whatever you're watching, you get up, go in there, get that ice cream. But you got to get a little bitty spoon. That way you don't eat as much. I know, it works for me. So anyway, I stop in this grocery store. And I picked up, you know, I still didn't have my sink in place yet. So I've been eating like frozen foods and, and stuff out on the grill. So I picked up a pack of chicken, solid boneless chicken breast, big dudes. And it was like five of them for $14. So I get home, I put them in the, in the refrigerator, which is keeps everything ice cold. And this was in the afternoon, the day before yesterday. So I didn't want to make chicken that day. I was, you know, I wore out and I didn't want to make it. So I just ate something else. So, I mean, hey man, you put chicken in your refrigerator for 24 hours, it should be good, right? So I opened the package, and it's, uh, it just did not. It smelled like somebody farted. And then I got my nose up close to the chicken, and I'm going, and I couldn't really smell anything. And, and then I smelled the package. In the, you know, it's got that little absorbing, absorbing pad in there. It did. It smelled like somebody wiped their butt. And I'm like, man, I don't know. But the chicken still smelled good. I figured it was just that paper. But I'd kind of turned my stomach a little bit. But I cooked it anyway. So I put it out on the grill. Oh, man, I even made a short of it. Looks good. It looked real good. And I cut me up some taters and put them in a foil pack. I put some olive oil and some Cajun spice and pepper and, and goodies in there. And I put the foil pack on the grill. And then I go out with the chicken. And I cook. The grill's doing good. And I go out and I flip the chicken. Perfect timing. It's got the grill marks. I let it cook a little bit, and then I take some barbecue sauce out there and spread it on with a brush, and it's looking good, and it's smelling good, and I'm getting hungry, you know, I can't wait, so then I go out there, it's done, it's cooked plenty, you got, I mean, they're fat pieces of chicken, you got to make sure they're done, I go out and I get them, I put one on my plate, I put some taters on my plate, I made some baked beans, and I start digging in. I ate them potatoes was good. Baked beans was good. Then I took a knife and I cut me off a piece of chicken. Didn't have, it just had a funky flavor. No, I'm like, all right, maybe that's a piece of burnt. You know, I like to, when I put the barbecue sauce on, I like to burn it on a little bit. So I dug into the middle of it. And it's done. It's white. It's, you know, it's tender. It's juicy, but it ain't too juicy. But it's white. It's done. I know when chicken's done. I know. I know I've cooked before, okay? 
So I take a bite of that and it's nasty. And I'm mad. Because now all I got is taters and beans. You can get filled up on taters and beans. But I didn't make enough taters. I didn't make enough beans. I wanted to eat some chicken. And I am not a big fan of chicken to begin with. And the only way I eat it is on the grill with barbecue sauce on it. Yes, I know barbecue sauce is bad for you. But man, <laughs> you know, a man's got to do what a man's got to do once in a while. So I threw the whole batch out because it had it tasted terrible. But it didn't taste like it was spoiled. I don't know. Maybe somebody wiped their butt with it. That's what it smelled like. But it didn't smell like that cooked. It just tasted it was it was bad. I mean, chicken is something you don't question. If you think it's bad, you you got to throw it out, man, and I'd already taken two bites of that. And maybe it was that it was in my mind that it might have been bad, but then I kind of felt my stomach gurgling a little bit. But I honestly think it was bad. And but it wasn't enough to do anything. I mean, I got an iron iron gut. I can eat. Yeah, I mean, I could eat the inside off a of hog fat. Ain't gonna bother me. But that I wasn't eating, so I was a little upset. I was ready to call up my local Harps grocery store because I'd forgot that I had bought it in Mansfield, and they had just turned into a Harps. They were something else before that. But every single grocery store I've heard that's been in that Mansfield uh, location, they've had trouble with. So I will never, and, and it's like half the size of the local store here. So I will never ever, I'll probably never buy meat in that chain again. Because that's, I mean, how does that even get through? The chicken, I always look at the dates. The date was fine. It was sealed good. But, you know, like I said, when I opened it, it smelled like somebody farted. And I smelled that package, and that's it was coming from that. It was bad. I had to take it outside. I put it in the trash. The trash bag wasn't even full. And I tied it up, took it outside. Then I had to throw the chicken out. So I had to go out there, open the bag back up, because I didn't want to waste put that in a new one, because it had to go out. And so now i got to make sure I get that bag when I go to feed the dogs this morning over at the Ivy's i got to take that to the dumpster. I'm going to take it to the dumpster down there, down there by them. Because I don't want no old critters get a hold of that. So, I, I mean, I understand. No, I don't understand that things like that happen. In a grocery store, things like that should never, ever, ever happen. Maybe the chicken itself was good and the... The absorbent package, uh, whatever that is, they, you know, they, have you ever, you open your meat and you got that little absorbent, absorbs all the juice, so it doesn't drip all over your grocery bags, you know. Maybe that, I don't know how something like that could go bad, but maybe it was, maybe somebody did take it to the bathroom, you know. I don't know, disgruntled employee, who knows, man. But that's my story, I'm sticking to it. But I'm glad I didn't call my local store because that's, not where I got it. Um, the ice cream was good. Yeah. It was frozen. It was good. All right, guys. That's my story for today. Y'all have a great Sunday. Happy trails. I said happy trails. <laughs>